when one looks at Pluto's orbit, which is this one right here, uh, as you look at it in general, it looks fairly circular, but the sun's not at the center of it. So it is a fairly elliptical orbit, although certainly looks very sphere very circular. Is this then drawn poorly? No, is it it's more not elliptical than that? No, it's not. Oh, when you okay. draw it accurately, it looks to the eye like it's circular. Uh, but the eccentricity is still big enough. It's much more eccentric. Than so do a lot of people it. draw that poorly? Because I've always I'm seen pictures of it very elliptical. Yes. All right. So yeah, the, the pictures often poorly drawn. Uh, it could be. You might often very mistake it. Then. Well, you may often mistake it for the for orbits that show Comet Halley, hmm. which is very elliptical, hmm. much more compressed. And you can see down here that Pluto just barely comes inside the orbit of Neptune for about a 20-year period out of its... Uh, 248-year cycle. And so there was a period from 1979 to 1999. If you really want to get finicky on your test, Neptune was the most distant planet. Mm -hmm. Of course, now we're back to saying, yeah, Neptune is the most distant planet because Pluto's been declassified. 1999. 1999. So that was fairly recently. Yes. It, it, oh, yeah, there, there was a 20-year really interval when Pluto was closer in to the sun than Neptune was. So this is about where Pluto is right now in okay. terms of Neptune's orbit. Right. It's, it's not far away from there because... And again, the, the objects in the solar system are going around in a counterclockwise direction. So, you know, somewhere in this looking vicinity. Looking down on it. Looking down at somewhere about here. And, of course, Pluto's orbit is fairly highly tilted, too. So it's not in the same flat plane as the rest of the planets, or Where's as it? the planets. Where? The newest object, which is Eris, and when it was originally discovered, it was given this name, but it now formally has been named by the International Astronomical Union, clearly has a much more elliptical orbit. And all the evidence at this point indicates it's bigger than Pluto. And so if Pluto was a planet, this clearly was entitled to also be called a planet. Eris is spelled? E-R-I-S. E-R-I-S. Yeah. Uh, let me... Yeah, that's a tough one to deal with this. My spelling is... My writing is not the best <laughs> to start with. You may it's have to an awkward it. pen. You may have to edit it up. Eris is... Uh, really brought the... The situation to a head, because we find, you know, I think this a number of astronomers, many astronomers, who really thought Pluto probably doesn't deserve to be classified as a planet it belongs with the Kuiper Belt object. Certainly, in studies of the solar system, that migration of Pluto being among those bodies was well established. We'll group it with these in terms of trying to understand what's going on in the solar system. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, we know now know of dozens of these things. It may have been approaching hundreds that are in orbits out here near the orbit of Pluto. Are they coming in as close contact with Neptune as Eris is? Uh, probably not as close as Eris, but some of them may be coming in closer. You actually, we, mm. we can probably find an image that shows them, uh, at least many of them coming in. But yes, they're, they're coming in within the boundaries of, of Pluto. But Eris is discovery really brought to a head, and astronomers, believe it or not, have never had a formal definition of a planet. Mm -hmm. It was sort of, well, everyone understood, understands what it is. And if you found it, it's a planet. It found it, <laughs> planet. Uh, we've had a planet. Actually, this has occurred once before, the minor planets. When the bit largest of them was discovered in Ceres, for a year, it was only one. Star and, series. And no, is that correct? No, this is not the star series. This is the minor planet Ceres, S-C-E-R-E-S. -E this is an asteroid. Oh. Minor planet is another name for the asteroid. This is the largest of the asteroids. When it was first discovered, it was a planet for a year, till the second one was found. When was this? Oh, back in the 1800s. Uh, or seven, I, I have to check the date. That must have been some hoopla. All right. <laughs> and so that we've gone through this before, but see, Pluto got this extended stay of 70 to 80 years being labeled a planet, so it's a little bit hard to, harder to break the tradition. Mm. With Ceres, it wasn't very hard at all. And a year, and a year later, one was found, then another one, another one. Now we know there are thousands of asteroids. So maybe this was the first mislabeled body that was fixed right. quickly. Right, right. And, of course, the asteroids were in a gap that's known as the, um, the there's a thing called Bode's Law that predicts there should be a planet there. It's, 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 first, it wasn't done by Bode, it's not a law. It's just sort of an <laughs> empirical pattern recognition, which okay. is, of course, good mathematics. Look for a pattern. Right. And there's a pattern that says there could be a planet here. And, indeed, that's what had people looking for the asteroids. And they found one. Only they thought they were looking for a planet. 
And that's why it was a planet at first, but then became the asteroids. All right, so now we've got something bigger. So the International Astronomical Union set up a committee that actually worked for a couple of years to decide how to reclassify planets, give them a formal definition. And probably part of the agenda, at least for some of us, we need to get Pluto out of there. We need a definition that, that it's not too complicated, it makes sense to most people, most astronomers at least, and probably says Pluto doesn't belong as a planet. Maybe it's another group of minor planets or Kuiper Belt objects, whatever you want to call it. It's really just a labeling thing. It doesn't change what Pluto is, it just changes what we label it. And so a decision was finally made within this past year that Pluto is no longer a planet. When within that, the solar system. When that happened, was there any discussion about, okay, you're going to throw out Pluto, you should throw out Mercury because it's small and it's too close? And what about Vulcan? Wasn't there some talk about another planet that broke apart already? No, I mean, there is a history of a planet named Vulcan before Star Trek, by the right, way. Right, right. Uh, and was, closer than Mercury. And cl supposedly closer than Mercury. Mercury is misleading in a way. Mercury is actually smaller than two of the moons of the solar system, depending on how you define it. If you define it as volume-wise, it's smaller than the largest Saturn's largest moon, Titan, and Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede. But Mercury is twice as massive as right. them. So Mercury really, although it's small, really fits the same image as the Earth and Venus. One, you can actually make a better argument that Mars doesn't belong, because Mars, although it's more massive than Mercury, it doesn't have nearly the iron concentration. Mercury mm -hmm. is actually the most heavily iron-concentrated planet in the solar system. So if you strip off a lot of Earth, you'd have something like Mercury. Right. Something. Like, well, you don't even have to strip it off. Earth's dense, average density is very close to that of Mercury. Mm -hmm. So they're very comparable. It's Mars that has a considerably lower density, but still much higher than, than the giant planets, which is really what sets them apart.